Sons of Matthew is the second last of eight films in the long and illustrious career of Charles and Elsa Chevelle. Chevelle is a name synonymous with the action-adventure blockbusters created for the silver screen in the glory days of the movies, the 1940s. When Charles and Elsa Chevelle made this feature film, they were based in Hollywood and these iconic figures were returning to Queensland, where Charles had grown up. Sons of Matthew tells the story of rural life in Australia at the turn of the 20th century. Charles Chevelle had been brought up in this world of bush pioneers, and it was this world in Sons of Matthew that he wanted to depict. Sixty-two years after Sons of Matthew was filmed, some of the cast and crew met for a reunion. The Stevens family hosted the reunion at their family homestead in the Darlington Valley, southeast Queensland, one of the many locations for the film. Wendy Gibb, the leading lady, travelled from her home in New Zealand to meet with the people who had meant so much to her during the filming. Who would think that here we all would be uh, 62 years later? Yes, all together. Isn't that lovely? My name's Rel McKenney. I was Rel O'Reilly. My father was Bernard, who wrote a book called Green Mountains, which was the inspiration for Charles Chevelle's um, movie, Sons of Matthew. Originally, I think it was meant to be just the O'Reilly story, but of course, as it grew, it became something more than that, and so the name became uh, Sons of Matthew. There's five of us in the family. That's more than 3,000 acres. And with Angus McAllister's portion, we control the entire tabletop of one of the greatest battles in Australia. It's immense, Dad. That's real land. Oh, but there's more to it than that, son. People are always interested in the O'Reilly story and how they went up there first and fell the rainforest. They had a national park that formed all around them, which meant they never had a road. They built a track right down the mountain to the valley. They cleared the rainforest, built their yards, milked their cows, and took their cream all the way down to Kerry, around the side of the mountain. And it was a really tough life. In 1947, and armed with money from Universal Pictures and Greater Union, the Chevelle shot on 27 locations, from Sydney to the southern Queensland bush of his childhood. Sons of Matthew is the story of a pioneering family of loss and love in the wilderness. Sons of Matthew, the film that we're speaking about today, starred Michael Pate and Wendy Gibb and several well-known Australian actors such as John Hewitt and John Unicum. Matthew and Jane's nearest neighbours were the Scotch McAllisters. Here's Angus and wife Jean and Cathy, their only child. Here she is in the three stages of her childhood and as a lovely girl of 17. I was fortunate enough to get the role of Cathy McAllister. It sort of played to my strengths a bit because, uh, you know, I had done quite a lot of horse riding and I was very comfortable with that. As a 12-year-old, having all these film stars in our midst was just very exciting. And I always remember Wendy and thinking how beautiful she was. She needs putting over someone's knee. I'll fight you for the job. Dad just told me the news. What news? About the great mountain country up in Queensland. I couldn't wait a minute. I just had to ride over at once. I can hardly breathe for thinking of it. Yes, it was a very Australian film, and 
uh, remains outstandingly Australian. Of course, Charles Cheville himself knew the Australian countryside. I mean, he knew its beauties and its wildness and its very particularly Australian quality. He was out for showing the strength of the Australian people, uh, both male and female, and uh, I think that that did come across in the film. We were a country family, and as I said, it was really something to have a film crew just down on the uh, flat there. We did everything we possibly could to assist the Chevelles in making the film. John Hayward and John Unicum. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Chevelle, and I'm not too sure of that horse, but that's Mrs. Chevelle on Dandy, and Tommy Burns on Tim, and Wendy on Wings, I think. I vividly remember the day of the stampede when we went over to the Rath Downey area and they'd mustered up all the local stockmen and to help control these horses. They had them galloping down this steep slope and of course it took quite a few stockmen and women, should I say, to keep them on track, to gallop exactly where they were to go. And after 12 years, Matthew was still setting the pace for that wild chorus of riders. The they put a pump into the creek to make it look as though there was a flood on, and we had to take the cattle across the creek, and that was quite an experience trying to get them across there. But being young like that, we had a lot of fun doing it. They got us to do it, I think, mainly because we could crack a whip and make plenty of noise. I remember the filming at the cliff face and what hard work it seemed to be for all of them. Cameramen almost hanging over the edge of the cliff with ropes and things, which must have been very nerve wracking, I would think, but uh, it was all part of the job to them, I guess. The production was dogged by bad weather, which halted the filming and extended the shooting period to last well over a year. All of the £40,000 budget had been spent, and the filming was still not complete. That film, Sons of Matthew, was a great challenge for my father as a director. He was really working against the odds in Queensland under such shocking weather conditions that went on for weeks and weeks and weeks and the financial backers threatened to pull the plug but of course they had no idea of what it was like to be working under those conditions. At one time Herc McIntyre of Universal Pictures and Norman Ridge of Great Union Theatres came up to the plateau to see what he was doing and this financial man Norman Ridge uh, threatened to toss a coin as to whether they would go on with it and Dad had a good long talk to him and said this was far too important a film to waste to the toss of a coin. The whole company was marooned at Round Mountain Camp owing to the worst floods in Queensland for the past 40 years. They were cut off from everything and had to have their food supply sent over the river by flying fox. But when that was all over and, and the weather was fine enough to film, then Dad put on this cyclone scene <laughs> and of course all the country people thought he was quite mad. They said, we've just had floods, you know, for the past so many weeks, why couldn't they have filmed it? Of course you couldn't take good cameras and, uh, and lighting equipment out into the middle of the real cyclone. So he borrowed um, the Brisbane Fire Brigade with their huge hoses and miles of hosing had to be carted up the mountainsides and down into ravines there in the Lamington Plateau to make the cyclone and gypsy moth aero engines to whip it all up. I remember going to Canangra for the big uh, function that they had over there with the Premier and it was all very exciting with the storm scene, etc. And I, I know they catered very well for everybody. It was like a great big party, so we sort of thoroughly enjoyed that. The cyclone scenes in Numanlal Valley 
were very, very risky scenes. Coming down this slippery track, the horse thought it was really too much for him. <laughs> and so he sort of reared up a bit, thrust his, threw his head back and caught me right between the eyes here, gave me a nice sort of bruise uh, right there and um, they, uh, I was temporarily unconscious. People thought, oh, here's another hold up in the film. <laughs> but I was all right, it was only momentary. After all, the show has to go on. Particularly for Charles Chevelle's point of view, if the scene wasn't exactly as he wanted it, you had to redo it. And so often these very dangerous scenes were done not once or twice, but sometimes multiple times before he got the shot that he really wanted. And so it was tough stuff. She had to battle against that and fall into the pool at Natural Arch in, in, in the middle of winter and Michael had to do the same thing and it was a very dramatic scene as you can imagine that took weeks to make. Loosen your hands, Kathy. Kathy, come on! Of course the film is really physically demanding right through, particularly for uh, someone like me who, and the other, lots of the other actors too, who'd come up from city life and hadn't really uh, experienced the difficulties of outdoor life and climbing and that sort of thing. Of course, we had that climb up Egg Rock, uh, which was quite terrifying. Uh, you didn't dare look down because see the distance you were up the rock face uh, was pretty frightening. This was Michael Pate's first leading role in an international career as an actor that spanned the next 60 years in film and television. Michael always said afterwards it was a great adventure. Yes. And yes, um, yes, he said it was a very physical film and he'd never yeah. realised that he would have to be an athlete as well as an actor. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Pate was, of course, you know, a very able actor and a very caring person. It was a physically gruelling but ultimately life-affirming journey for cast, for crew and for the army of helpers in country Queensland who committed themselves so heartily to making this film. There was a real family feeling uh, in the company. As in a family, when things are a little bit tough, uh, it brings the family closer together. And there was this feeling of comradeship. And then, of course, where we went in the country, we had wonderful hospitality from uh, the Stevens family, particularly personally uh, for me in the group, camp group I was. We were close to the Arch Stevens homestead, Tantallon. Because our home was so close to the camp, we entertained producers and a crew on numerous occasions. So I remember them sitting here on the veranda having cups of tea. And during the winter, when it was cold, that the fireplace was very welcome. Wendy said to me a while ago, it was like home away from home. And Arch and Mavis, I remember their lovely hospitality and warmth and friendship. They were great people. It's been lovely to come back and meet up with Wendy again after all these years. Hard to believe. And uh, Wendy was so beautiful in the film and she and Michael did such a fine job and it's just a joy to meet up with her and talk over old times. You can understand that this was one of the very special memories in my lifetime with the Stevens family in the valley here. Yes, I feel nostalgia and, uh, you know, little elements of sadness in the nostalgia inevitably, but also a great gladness that I've had those sorts of experiences with those sorts of people, yes.
Sons of Matthew is one of the most important films in Australian and global cinema history. Its daring adventure filming on location was groundbreaking in its day. The making of Sons of Matthew celebrates the Queensland of 150 years ago. The Queensland that has shaped who we are today. Thank you.